Hey guys, Jared Wesley of Live Traders, and we are back for another weekly educational lesson. First and foremost, I want to apologize. It's been a little bit, maybe a couple weeks or so, a week and a half since I've uploaded a new video. I apologize for that. I am a very, very busy person, um, but I'm going to make it a point. Uh, to start uploading at least one, hopefully two videos a week, so stay tuned for that. The big question though is what is this week's topic? I've been getting a lot of emails, a lot of questions from folks who are saying, you know, Jared, what if? What if I don't have 25 or 30,000 or $50,000 to trade with? How can I still trade with $2,000, $5,000, $10,000, et cetera? So I get this question quite frequently, a lot of times from US-based traders because most of you are aware of the SEC FINRA pattern day trading rule that requires you to have at least $25,000 in your account to take an unlimited number of trades, which is what most intraday traders like. So today, uh, I put together a little bit of a presentation for you guys so we can look at all the different aspects and all the different angles. Basically, what are your choices? What are your options if you don't have $25,000 and you are a US-based trader? This is less of a big deal to foreign-based traders because they're not subjected to the uh, SEC FINRA rules that we have here in the United States. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that today. I'm also gonna show you how I personally, this is about six or seven years ago because I don't use prop style accounts anymore, um, but how I personally grew $2,000 into over $50,000 and I'll also show you how I took $2,500 into over $100,000. So I put that in the slideshow as well. Why? Because we are talking about various types of accounts from $5,000 accounts up to $100,000 accounts and everything in between. Um, so we'll get into that as well. And we're also going to talk a little bit about risk management and money management. I did a presentation on this a couple few weeks back. You guys should definitely watch that presentation because it's the single most important thing to becoming a successful trader is account protection, risk management, money management. So I'll throw a little bit of that in because it relates to having a small account. A lot of people make the excuse, they're like, Jared, I have a really small account, I can't trade Amazon. Why not? I'll explain how you can trade Amazon in just a couple minutes, all right? So today's topic, guys, is growing a small account as well as what your choices and options are if you don't have a lot of money in your trading account, as well as some of my own personal experience, how I've grown small accounts in the past. All right, Jared Wesley of Live Traders, let's get to it, guys. All right, guys, uh, let's dig into this and start the conversation about how to trade with a small account. And it's not just about how to trade with a small account today. It's also different account types, all right? How many different accounts are there? What account is best for you? What's your financial situation, which is will obviously have a dependency upon what type of an account you're able to use, uh, where you're based in the world, US-based versus international-based, et cetera, and so forth. I get these questions all the time. So I thought I would do a little bit of a lecture on it so I can clear the air a little bit and you guys will have a better understanding of what is available to you, particularly as a US-based trader, but also as an international-based trader and as I said a couple minutes ago I'm also going to talk a little bit about a couple small accounts that I grew okay from two thousand dollars to over fifty thousand twenty five hundred over a hundred thousand dollars etc and so forth um, but as always I plan on being very direct uh, I plan on being direct because I want you guys to get the truth out of this. I know you're reading a lot of Google advertisements and you're seeing a lot of this crap like, oh, I turned $378 into a million dollars verified, blah, 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 right? While you're still living in your parents' basement. Okay, so my point I'm making is this is a very, very serious business that requires a lot of effort, time, patience, discipline from you guys. And it's very challenging because you don't have anybody overlooking your shoulder to make sure you're doing the right thing, all right? So when you have a smaller account, you have to be even more careful than somebody that has a larger account. So let's dig in, guys, okay? Um, this, is what's, this is what everybody wants, right, right here. Everybody wants to see a chart and like, wow, that's great, that's awesome. Um, 
you know, let's take a look at this pre-market buy setup right here. Pops right at the open. Jared mentions at 9.27 in the morning, mentioned on social media, and everybody goes, wow, that's incredible. Show me how you did that. That's not today's topic, okay? And I understand that more people are gonna watch a video where I talk about charts. Why? Because, because people are shallow and they don't understand the truth about trading. The, the most watched video I have should be money management video that I put out a couple weeks ago. That should be number one. It's not, the three bar play is, because people like charts, okay? Having said that, and before I continue, I do wanna let you know, guys, you can catch me on social media um, at Scalp Master on Stock Twits, all right? That's where you'll see these alerts and all these things before the market opens. I put these out there every single day. If you go to StockTwits.com, look me up at Scalp Master, okay? You can check me out on Twitter as well, at Scalp Master. And you can also check me out on Instagram at Scalp Master 1. But nonetheless, guys, these charts are great. It's a beautiful buy setup with a daily chart using pre-market charts. Uh, I mentioned before the market, that's wonderful, right? Here's a trade that I took yesterday, literally yesterday on Roku, guys. Using a pre-market chart, it was a buy setup. Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, right? Get in at 108.20, stop 106.90, rip, Okay, and there it is, you can see Roku 108.10 by 106.90. I took a little bit of slippage on the entry uh, and there's the kind of the P&L as it went higher, guys. And that's something I took yesterday in the chat room. So again, you can get a $1.30 day trial in the chat room, just email info, I-N-F-O at livetraders.com. Here's one that I took today. This one was a little bit frustrating, why? Because pennies matter, guys. We're gonna talk about that when we talk about the accounts as well. So here's a two minute three bar play, wide range red bar followed by a narrow range doji green bar drop. Now, the truth is the chart says I should be in at 99.10 with a stop at 99.50, right? That's what the chart says. I waited for the whole number just in case there were some buyers there, et cetera. So I waited 10 cents to get in this thing, okay? Well, that 10 cents cost me a lot of money um, because had I got in at 99.10, I would have had a 40 cent stop and this thing would have gone two to one and we would have been out for a full target about 800 bucks. But I got in a little bit later on purpose. I purposely waited the 10 cents, made my stop a 50 cent stop and means I missed target by 10 or 15 cents. That's the way it goes in trading sometimes, guys. But again, these are topics I'm not gonna talk about today. I just wanted to show you a couple of trades that I took recently. What I wanna get into now is the meat and potatoes of why we're here today, okay? There are various types of trading accounts, okay? And United States tends to be a bit more strict when it comes to trading accounts. So we have retail accounts, prop accounts, international and offshore accounts. And if you wanna throw in 401k accounts, IRA accounts, you can, but these are basically your four basic types of accounts. Most traders in the United States are gonna fall into a retail category, okay? Some of you will fall into a prop category. Prop simply means proprietary trading account. For those of you that do not know what a proprietary trading account is, basically it works like this. You go to a firm, you put up some risk capital, 2,000, 3,000, $5,000, and then the firm provides you with leverage, okay? So most prop firms, and we'll get into this a little bit deeper in a couple minutes, they provide you a 10 to one or 20 to one leverage. So if you opened up a prop account with a $5,000 risk capital, they would have let you, say it's 20 to one leverage, they would let you trade with up to $100,000 in buying power. Okay, and if your $5,000 dwindled down to say 2,000, they would ask you to put more money into your account. Okay, that's what a prop account, it stands for proprietary trading. Okay, now I don't wanna list those accounts out there. There are some companies you can go to, they're becoming less and less common because the SEC and FINRA is very strict on how they're run, but we'll get into the specifics in a couple minutes. So hold your horses on the prop account. The vast majority of you out there are dealing with what we call retail accounts. PDT, which is a pattern day trading account, or a non-pattern day trading account, a margin account, or a non-margin account. So a pattern day trading account, guys, basically means you can take unlimited trades, unlimited trades, but in order to do this, you have to have at least minimum $25,000 in your account. So if you have less than $25,000 in your account at any time, you would be a non-PDT account. And when you're in a non-PDT account, you are subjected to the pattern day trading rule, which 
limits you to three trades per week. And that's a rolling basis. So if you took all three trades on Tuesday, you have to wait till the following Tuesday to take more trades. It doesn't reset on Monday, right? If you took all these trades on Friday, it doesn't reset Monday. It's a five-day rolling period. So if you have less than $25,000 in your account, you are based in the United States of America, okay? You have a non-pattern day trading account and you're subjected to that rule, which means you can only take three, three trades per week, okay? Now, we also have two sub-accounts here, margin and non-margin. So it is possible to have a non-PDT account with margin, right? For example, TradeStation requires you to have $2,000 in your account. They will leverage you four to one intraday. So that means with your $2,000 account, you could actually trade up to $8,000 of stock, okay? And if you don't have a margin account, you're subjected to cash only. Whatever value of cash that's in your account is what you can trade. This is mostly 401k and IRA accounts. So if you have $50,000 in your IRA, you can trade $50,000 worth of stock. However, if you had $50,000 in a retail account, you would have four to one leverage and you could trade $200,000 worth of stock. Now, I understand what some of you are thinking. You're going, margin, margin, that, oh my gosh, uh, I don't want to hear that word. Margin is scary. Well, let's talk a little bit about margin before we continue, okay? Let's talk about this negative impression, right? So most people have a negative impression of margin, margin accounts, when in reality, they are not much different than a non-margin account. And the fact is the vastly, vast majority of traders use them. All right, if you're an intraday trader, even a swing trader, but mostly an intraday trader, 98% of intraday traders use margin. Why? Because you should. It's free money, right? Most platforms are not charging you a fee unless you hold it overnight, okay? So if you have a $50,000 account and you can get leverage up to $200,000, you're good. Now, what's key here, what's key here is that you have money management rules, that you never break those rules, because obviously you don't want a margin call, but you have to be really, really foolish to get a margin call, okay? So thank you, Investopedia, for the definition. Margin is the money borrowed from a brokerage firm to purchase an investment. It is the difference between the total value of securities held in an investor's account and the loan amount from the broker. So in this example I gave you, that would simply mean you had a $50,000 cash account all right, that's the value of your account, the actual value, but you were leveraged or margined four to one, which means $200,000. So this allows you what? To take more shares of higher price stocks, okay? So for example, guys, let me see if I can find you an example of a slightly higher price stock. Uh, let's see here. Okay, let's use Roku, okay? I don't think I have any, yeah, Roku is a good example, all right? So if you had a $50,000 account, okay, on Roku, and you wanted to trade 1% risk, which would be $500. That means if you lost on Roku, you would lose $500. So in this scenario, the stop loss is $1.30, right? The entry is 108.20. The stop loss is 106.9. It's $1.30. So if you took your trusty old calculator out, okay, and took $500 divided by $1.30, you would need 385 shares. 385 shares of Roku. Well, if you took 385 shares of Roku, it's 108.20 times 385. That would cost you $41,000, right? It would cost you literally $41,000 to buy Roku, okay? So that would mean if you had a cash only account, you would only have about eight or $9,000 left to take another trade until you exit Roku. So Roku is eating up like 41 or $42,000 of your $50,000 account. You don't have much left. However, if you had a margin account leveraged four to one, you would have $200,000 to buy Roku. So if you used 41 or $42,000, that means what? You still have $158,000 left to take another trade or two. So realistically, in that example, Roku only cost you about eleven or twelve thousand dollars because you were leveraged four to one. Do you see how margin can help you? Because otherwise, if you didn't have that margin, you could really only take one trade at a time, assuming it was an expensive trade, 
right? But with margin, you could take two or three or even four trades at the same time. So generally speaking, guys, as long as you have good money management, margin is your friend. Now, it's different when you're swing trading. Maybe you get a news report or a negative gap against you. But as long as you're using hard stops in the system as an intraday trader, margin is really, really helpful. Okay, so let's take a quick look, guys, at some of the retail accounts. These are some of the more popular retail accounts out there. Uh, TradeStation is very popular. Think or Swim, which is TD Ameritrade, Fidelity, Charles Schwab, E-Trade, uh, DAS, Lightspeed, Interactive Brokers. I would say, guys, I don't know for sure, but Think or Swim, Interactive Brokers, TradeStation, these are three of the largest out there. Okay, I personally use TradeStation. I love TradeStation, why? I love the order entry matrix, okay? Now, some people like interactive brokers because the fees are a little bit more inexpensive. Now, a lot of these brokers have gone to commission-free trading, but it's usually on their mobile web-based um, platform. I don't use a web-based platform. They're not as good as the platform that you download to your computer. Okay, so anyway, guys, there's, uh, I don't know, seven or eight here that you can look at. I personally use TradeStation. Uh, Interactive Brokers is outstanding. Thinkorswim is good. I've used a lot of these. I used to have an E-Trade account some many years ago. Lightspeed I've used. Uh, Interactive Brokers I've used. I, I Thinkorswim I've used. TradeStation. I, I really like TradeStation. But anyway, this is just an example. Now, you need to do your own homework in terms of which one of these is better. All right. Some of them have higher fees. Some of them have lower commissions, but it depends on the order entry, the charting, the scanning capabilities of them. I like, like I said 17 times already, I like TradeStation for those reasons. It's just a really good one-stop shop. Now, let's go back to this slide real quick. I also talked a little bit about international or offshore accounts. I'm going to get to this in more detail and the prop account in more detail in just a second, I promise. International offshore accounts, two examples of those guys would be, for example, Shore Trader, right? Shore Trader or Trade Zero. I can't recommend or non recommend either one of these. I do not trade offshore accounts. They are not FDIC insured. They could potentially take your money. I am not suggesting they will or they have. I'm not saying that to the folks that use Shore Trader or Trade Zero. I'm not knocking them. I just prefer the protection of having an FDIC insured US based broker. That's all I'm saying. Some of these brokers, I think Short Trader allows six to one leverage. That's fantastic. This is a possibility for people that don't have $25,000 in their account. Let's be honest, this is a possibility for those of you that don't have that kind of money in your account. Say you only have four or $5,000, maybe give these guys a call, okay, and, and see what they can do for you. All right. Now, Let's talk in more detail about the differences here, okay? And I have a little chart that I'm gonna put up in just a second about the differences. So in a retail account, guys, you need at least twenty-five dollars to $30,000. I say 30,000 because if you go a penny under 25, they lock your account. You get four to one leverage intraday. That means at the end of the day, and you hold something overnight, you only get two to one leverage, but from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m., you get four to one leverage. A good return on this type of an account is 10 to 20% per month, okay? Or 100 to 200% per year. This assumes, it's important, you never ever risk more than 1%. And guys, I'll be honest with you, it's really hard to risk more than 1%. Why? You're usually gonna run out of buying power. If you're in three open positions, and you're risking 1% of your account, you're probably going to run out of buying power. All right, so risking a half a percent or three quarters of a percent is a better option for you. And that assumes you're an experienced, profitable trader. You do not risk 1% if you're a new trader. I'll repeat this so there's no confusion. If you are a new trader, a non-profitable trader, a break-even trader, <coughs> excuse me, you do not risk 1%. You risk $10 per trade period. We'll get to that later. There's no limit to your possible downside. I mean, if you're foolish and stupid, you could blow up a retail account in one day. If you're that dumb, you could do this. If you have no money management rules, you could do that. Okay. You get no commission rebates. That means when you provide liquidity, right? Say you're offering out using a limit order, you do not get commission rebates most of the time. Okay. 
The platform fee is usually waived for active traders, okay? I know, for example, with TradeStation, if you take more than 5,000 shares per month, the platform fee is waived, okay? You can hold overnight. Those are the basic tenants of a retail account, okay? No restrictions, really. It's your account. When you switch to a prop style account, proprietary trading account, you can get in, you can open an account for two or 3,000. Now, to be clear, you can open a retail account for $2,000, guys. You can open a retail account for $500, but you only get three trades a week. That's the difference. So you can open a retail account for two grand, but you're only getting three trades a week. Whereas with a prop account, you can open it for two or $3,000 risk capital, but you get unlimited trades, okay? You usually get 20 to one leverage or buying power. So if you had a $2,000 account, you'd have $40,000 to trade with. That's a lot of money considering you only put down two grand, right? A good return would be 50% per month and that assumes a 2% risk. Guys, you really shouldn't be trading 2% risk very often. 1% really should be the max risk you're taking. And again, new traders only risk $10, period. Daily drawdown is controlled. Well, this is good for traders that don't have a lot of discipline. What do I mean by this? Usually when you go to a prop firm, they will tell you, okay, you have $5,000 in your account, Johnny. Uh, you're allowed to lose $500 in one day or $300 in one day. So let's say you have a bad day and your max loss is 300 per day. If you hit minus 300 and you are at a prop firm, they will shut you down. They will literally deactivate your trading privileges until tomorrow. So if it's 10, 15 a.m. and you're already down $300 and that's your max loss for the day, the trading firm will deactivate your account and you'll live to fight another day. This is a positive thing, right? It's a positive thing because over here in a retail account, well, guess what? You could lose 10 or $20,000 if you're really stupid. You keep trading all these shares of RNG or Roku and it keeps going against you and against you and against you and all of a sudden you're down five, 10, 20 grand. You cannot do that in a prop account. They will shut you down. They will shut you down, okay? You can get commission rebates. So in that example I gave, if you're providing liquidity, let's say you're offering out using a limit order at your target, they'll give you a, a rebate commission for that. Maybe 20 cents per 100 shares or something like that. It depends, okay? Why is that important? It's important because it lowers the cost of your trade fees, okay? It's a slightly more expensive platform fee. Most prop accounts are between $100 and $400 per month, right? Depending on the platform you use, they charge between $100 and $400 per month, okay? And you cannot hold overnight. Why? Because of the 20 to 1 leverage, right? You cannot hold overnight. So here's the graph or the little chart that shows you the difference, guys. There's a couple more things I wanna to add to this. So minimum cost for a retail account, 25 grand. For a prop account, usually two or 3,000. It might be a little less than three, okay? Maximum leverage, four to one. Maximum leverage here is 10 to one, 20 to one, 31. Guys, when I had a prop account, they gave me 300 to one leverage, 300 to one leverage, okay? Maximum drawdown is unlimited in a retail account. It's controlled in a prop account. Commission rebates, I put the little star here. Most of the time, no, most of the time. There might be one or two platforms out there that have that. Prop accounts, usually you can. Now, this is where it gets negative for prop accounts. This is the negative and you have to be careful about this. One, you cannot hold overnight. So you can't have a swing trading prop account. Prop account are only for intraday trading. Now, when it comes to testing or licensing, you have to have one for a prop account. You have to have one for a prop account. Okay, you have to have a series 56 or a series 57 or a series seven. That means you have to go and take the test. Series seven is 200 questions. You have to pass it with at least a 70%. Series 56 or 57, uh, there are 100 questions. And guess what comes with that? Compliance. You have to take continuing education, not in terms of what a chart looks like, guys, you have to take FINRA education, all right? Every year, you gotta go through FINRA training, okay? You also have a one-year lock period on your money. So if you put $5,000 into a prop account on October 1st, 2019, you can't take any of that money out until October 1st, 2020. Now, you can take profits out. If you make money, you can take profits out. But that initial $5,000 risk capital, you have 
to leave in for one year. It's locked for one year, okay? Gives you no education on either one of these accounts. And this one is really crazy. I, I, this is a newer rule in the past three or four years that is just really crazy to me, okay? It says list outside accounts. What does that mean? Let me explain. If you join a prop firm, okay, and you have a 401k account, and let's just say you have a trade station account. Let's say you have two other accounts plus your prop account. So overall, you have three accounts, 401k and a trade station account. When you join the prop firm, you have to list your 401k and your trade station account, and the prop firm has the ability to see your other accounts. They're allowed to watch over your other accounts. Now, they're not allowed to trade your other accounts. They're not allowed to touch those accounts, but they're allowed to look at your monthly statements and your reports on those accounts. And you have to pay them to do this. $25 a month is usually the fee. For me, that's incre incredible. It's one of the biggest reasons that I left the prop firm some six or seven years ago when they started talking about doing these things. You guys have to realize that 10, 15 years ago, prop firms won. They didn't have a series test. You could just join a prop firm without having a license, a FINRA license, and you didn't have to list outside accounts. Now you have to do both of those things. So there are some negatives to this. You have to study and get a license, okay? So you can see here at the overall score at the bottom is 4-4. They have positives and negatives. Now it's much easier to open up a retail account but there's a lot more restrictions with regard to how much money you need. So if you have less than $25,000, what do you do? That's the question I hear you all screaming about. Okay, well, let's talk about it. If you have less than 25,000, you have several choices. You can take three trades a week, assuming you go to the, re you know, the retail route. You could take three trades a week, okay, on a rolling basis. You could do that, that's fine. You can open an offshore or an international brokerage account like Trade Zero or Shore Trader, et cetera, and so forth. That's fine. I can't recommend it because it's offshore. I won't do it. Okay. You could join a prop firm, which requires a Series 57 license and compliance. Okay. You can open up two or three smaller retail accounts, right? Say you have $5,000. Maybe you open up Three accounts, $2,000 account, $2,000 account, $1,000 account. This gives you nine trades per week, which is almost two per day, which should be enough, okay? So in that respect, you could open two or three smaller accounts. Is it a little bit annoying? It is, but you could do it, okay? Or you could swing trade longer term trading, right? You could take longer term trades based off of daily charts. For example, here's an example, okay? This is an example of a three bar play on a daily chart. So you get a wide range bar breaks out of the range, followed by a narrow range bar blast off, all right? You don't need that many of these per month, guys. You could take five or 10 of these trades per month. So if you have three trades per week, you get about 12 trades per month, okay? So you could swing trade on higher time frames using 60 minute charts, daily charts, weekly charts. Here's a weekly breakout, okay? Uh, that you could take over $20 with a stop at 18, so a $2 stop loss, et cetera. So you could do that, all right? You could. Now, again, if you wanna be more of an intraday trader, where, for example, here is a bearish four bar play on a five minute chart, then you might wanna open two or three smaller accounts, okay? Guys, I'm gonna say something here, and I know it's gonna ruffle some feathers. It's gonna, it's gonna take some of you the wrong way. If you have less than $2,000, you're not ready yet. You're not ready yet. I get emails all the time. I have $100 to trade. What can I trade with Jared? I have $1,000. What can I, I don't care what some of these other, you know, internet gurus are saying about their $522 account that they turned into $918,000, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I worked on Wall Street. I've been doing this 20 years, guys. I know behind the scenes too. Some people are just getting you in the door. Smoke and mirrors in the door. Okay, I'm telling you, if you have less than two grand, you're not ready yet. You're not ready. Just save a little bit more. Guys, the market will be here tomorrow. It'll be here next week. It'll be here next month. Okay, it'll be here next year. If it's not, you and I won't be here either. Trust me. If the stock market goes under, you and I won't be here. It'll be Armageddon. Okay, 12th century. We won't be here either. All right, so have at least two to $5,000 before you start this business. Okay, so if you don't have 25,000, that's okay. All right, that's okay. You can take three trades a week on a rolling basis like this, open multiple accounts. You could swing trade like we just talked about right here, okay? 
Here's the good news. You're taking the same trades. They're just on higher time frames. There's no difference, guys, between a five-minute three-bar play and a daily three-bar play. They're the same trade. One just happens to be on a higher time frame with a wider stop loss. It's the same concept, right? It's the same concept. So those are your main choices, guys, all right? Your main choices if you don't have 25,000. It's tempting to open an offshore account if you don't. If you're an international-based trader, most of these rules don't apply to you, okay? Opening a smaller account, two or three of them, is also smart. And if you want to join a prop firm, that's fine, guys. And I'll show you right now what I did with a prop account, okay? So, for example, I said, I've said this in, in years past. Generally speaking, money is not the problem, guys. But most traders make it a problem. Money isn't a problem. You make it the problem, okay? Look, trading a $1,000 or $2,000 account is the same as trading a $200,000 account. It's the same thing. You know, many new traders, guys, you guys are concerned about not having enough money to, to make a living in the trading business. Let's just dispel that, mo that notion right now. You can make a living in this business with a $5,000 account, but, 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 it's just much harder. You have to be much better because you can't risk a whole lot of money. Guys, if you use the 1% to 2% rule, a $5,000 account, you can only risk 50 to $100 per trade. So the process to grow it will take longer, right? The process to grow it will take longer. Okay, if you have a $50,000 account at 1%, that's $500. So that means just on one winning trade, you're making 10 times more than the guy with a $5,000 account. But that's okay, we all start at different places, okay? So here's the thing, you don't need 25K to trade profitably, guys. I just gave you some other avenues and other ways you can do that. Just don't trade above your experience level. Trade small until you've shown consistency, guys. Don't trade spready, whippy stocks that could hurt you. Don't overtrade, revenge trade, okay? More trades is not better. I average two to three trades a day, 50 trades a month. Some of you guys are taking 50 trades a day. You're gunslinging. FOMO, fear of missing out, the need to be right. It's ridiculous. And just stay objective. So let me show you, okay? This is an account in 2013. This is a prop account, okay? This company is no longer in business. It used to be called World Trade Securities WTS. They're no longer in business. I took $2,165.74. And at the end of the year, it's was $51,720.17. It's a 2,389% return, okay? But, but, it's a big but. I was not a new trader when I did this. When I did this, I had, I don't know, seven, eight years experience when I did this. I wasn't a new trader. If you're a new trader thinking you're going to take 2,000 into 50 overnight or in a year, you're not going to do it. You're gonna end up blowing up your $2,000 account. And I started off doing something really, really stupid. I mean, a week into my trading, I lost like a quarter of my account for being stupid. And I learned and didn't do it again for the rest of the year. But on this account, I was risking about 2%. Every once in a while, I would risk 2.5%. Okay, I risked 2%. And the reason I did this account, guys, the reason I did this was to prove a point to people saying you can't make a living with small accounts. You can, but if you're new, you're not going to. Guys, you don't always like what I'm gonna say, but I always spew the truth to you. If you have a really small account, guess what? You're not that good of a trader. You're not. You wouldn't have a small account if you were really good. Does that make sense? It does make sense, doesn't it? If you, only have, you, know, if you have a $3,000 account, you've been trading for a year, you're not that good. Otherwise, you wouldn't have a $3,000 account, okay? So the point I was making here is it's not about the money. It's the only point I was making. I wasn't trying to encourage people to start with $2,000. That's not what this was for. This was to show you guys that the money is secondary. Proper trading is number one. Good money management is number one. That's what's most important here. I took two grand and turned it into 50. Don't tell me it can't be done. So that means you can take 10 grand and turn it into what? 25 or no, 250 grand, right? Yeah, you should be able to if you're a good trader. Most people with small accounts are not good traders. That's why they have small accounts, okay? So anyway, you can see the monthlies here. I took kind of a snapshot of each quarter of the year, so to speak. Started with two grand, 
ended with 51,000 bucks. And you could see the first month, it was nice, made 75% of my account that month, okay? And that was with that horrible, ridiculous day where I lost 486 and I went on tilt because I was stupid and foolish. Hard lesson to learn. Thankfully, I had a little protection there. First day, I did really well, right? First week, I did well till that day happened. Point is, is you can see the account growing from two grand to four grand to 11 grand to 17 grand. The monthly checks from 1,400 to 5,300 to 7,600 to 11 or 12 grand. This is what happens when you systematically follow rules, take good trades, and use proper money management. And I wasn't taking money out of this account really, here and there a little bit. This account was simply to prove to people it can be done. And you know what? I've done it several times before this, okay? This is the middle one I just talked about right here, okay? Here's another account where I took 2,200 into about 100 grand. Here's another account where I took 13,000 into 95. Guys, it's just about proper trading. That's all it is. It's just about proper trading, guys, okay? That's all it is, proper trading. All right, 4,400%, 2,300%, You're not going to do this if you're a new trader, though. I'm not trying to shatter your hopes and your dreams. You're going to need at least two, three years experience to be able to pull this off, and probably more than that. Okay, probably more than that. All right. Here's another prop account. All right, from 2011. This one I started the year like 15 grand. All right. And you can see this is like a full prop report. You can see over here. The fills, the quantity, the gross, after the, all the trade fees, the net, okay, um, the totals, transfer, blah, 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 all that stuff, okay? There was the platform fee, $269. You guys see that? That's how expensive the prop platform fee was back then, eight years ago. $269 a month. When you have a two dollars $3,000 account, that's a lot of money, isn't it? 10% a month of your account. That's crazy. You better be good, right? You better be good, Okay. You can see here, same deal, okay? A couple more months in. There are months I didn't do well, guys. Here's a month I made eight grand, great. That's nice. Here's a month I made two grand net, Ugh, right? Guys, there's a losing months in here too. Here's a losing month. Let's skip to the losing month, right? Here's a grand I made, a month I made nine grand, but then the following month, I grossed two grand, but look at my trade fees. Holy shnikes, over trading. I don't trade this way anymore. I trade the same patterns. I'm just far more efficient now, okay? Far more efficient now. So after fees, I lost 364 bucks. And then after the platform, I lost $600, right? I lost 600 bucks. So you can you could just see, guys. And then I bounced back really strong with $12,000 a month, okay? So my point I'm making is, and even now, I don't have 12 out of 12 up months a year. I have one or two down months every year. And this is eight years ago. The only difference is I don't spend anywhere close to this kind of money on trade fees. I could spend $20,000, $30,000, $40,000 back then on trade fees. But let me say this. You know what hasn't changed in all that time? These. I still take the same patterns, the same trades. Okay? 2010, 11, 12, 13, same trades I take 2017, 18, 19, 20. Pre-market buy setup with a beautiful gap, boom. Put it out there on social media, at Scoutmaster on stock twits, Twitter, Scoutmaster1 on Instagram, okay? These patterns, we still take the same four bar plays that I, that I show you guys on YouTube, okay? Same deal here, here's a bearish three bar play. Same patterns, that hasn't changed, okay? But this is what I don't do. This is what I don't do. I don't lose four grand and have no idea what the heck I'm doing. I'm down $2,000. I don't know what to do. Hold or cut losses. You're gambling. Don't do it. I've showed this slide before. Don't do it. If you want to blow up a trading account, then do this. Then do it. Okay? But guys, here's the real deal. Use this. I took a slide out of professional trading strategies to help you guys. Trader stages of success. Trainee, this means you first open up your account, your very first account. What are you gonna do with it? You're gonna simulator trade for one to four weeks, no more than a month, why not? Because simulator trading is not real trading. You get better fills, you don't have any consequence, 
it's not the same thing. So only do simulator trading or paper trading for a month. The purpose of paper trading is to learn your platform, learn the buttons, learn how you take a buy setter, not a buy setter, but how you take uh, a stop market order, how you use a stop limit order, how do you use limit orders, how do you set a bracket order, an OSO, an OCO. That's what that month is all about. Then with real money but small risk, you trade a live account, 10 to $25, small enough not to get hurt. This is what I call the beginner stage. Now, many of you are asking yourself, how do I go from beginner to intermediate? Your statistics will let you know, all right? So for three to six months, you risk 10 bucks, 20 bucks a trade, that is it. If you're showing consistent profitability over three or four to six months, you can move up to the 50 to $100 risk. Same concept applies. When you show three to six months of that, then you can move out of the intermediate. So realistically, guys, it should take you at least minimum, assuming you're a rock star, minimum, it should take you a year to get beyond $100 risk. That's the minimum. So for all of you out there trading more than $100 risk in your first year, you're being stupid. Okay, because very few of you are profitable traders in your first year. Very, very few of you. I know everybody else on Google and the internet wants you to believe, oh my gosh, look what I did with $287. I turned it into 1.2 million. Uh huh. Right. That's why I have a McLaren and a Ferrari in my garage, and they don't, because I don't know what I'm talking about, but they do. Okay, this isn't an ego stroke. I'm just telling you the truth. You're going to go read something on Google, and they just want your money. They just want your money. I want to teach you proper trading, okay? I'll take your money too. No, I'll t I just want to teach you proper trading, okay? So after that, and this typically takes the two to three year mark, you become, quote, professional. Then you can start thinking about risking 1% of your capital. But until you get to that consistency for a year or two, you should be trading 10 to $100 risk. Why? Because you're just going to unnecessarily lose money. And this is how and why people blow up trading accounts. Let me show you something else, okay? This is a percentage recovery chart. Anybody ever looked at one of these? This is a percentage recovery chart. What does this show? This simply shows how much you need to make to get back what you lost. So let's just go right to the middle of it. Let's say you lost 40% of your trading account because you were a bonehead and did something foolish. It would take a 67% gain to get back to break even. See, in the first couple tiers here, 5, 10, 15%, not a big deal. Once you start getting past 25, 30%, the battle becomes so much greater. And it's even harder than this because now you have to lower your risk. Guys, if you had a $50,000 account and you were risking 1% at $500, which you shouldn't have been, but you did it because you were foolish. And let's say you lost 30% of your account. That's 15 grand. Now you have a $35,000 account and you can no longer risk $500. You can only risk 350. So it's really even harder than this because you're risking less. So the bigger the hole that you dig for yourself, the harder it is to climb out. Many of you have done this over and over. I sigh. There's no badge of honor in blowing up a trading account. Anybody who tells you that's full of shit, okay? They're full of it, and they just want you to feel like, yeah, yeah, he blew up one, so it's okay for me. Here, give him your money. If you've ever blown up a trading account, it's the dumbest thing you've ever done in your life. I've never, not ever blown up a trading account. Money management is number one. Money management, you're risking 10 bucks a trade. It's kind of hard to blow up a trading account, isn't it? If you're using these proper rules, okay, proper rules, guys, whoops, right there, to step up from trainee to beginner to intermediate to professional, which means you need multiple months of consistent profitability, then if you can do that, you're probably a consistent trader and you've earned the right to go from 10 or $20 risk to 50 or 100, okay? Now, this is important. In the beginning of your trading career, do not base your risk level per trade on percentage of account. Why? Some of you are new, but you have $100,000 account. And you're like, well, he said 1%, so I'm gonna risk $1,000. No, it's not what I said. Read the chart. I don't care how big your account is. If Jeff Bezos, if you're out there listening, and Bill Gates, if you're out there listening to me too, $10 a trade, fellas, $10 a trade. That's it. Why? 
because you're new and you don't know your ass from a hole in the wall. You wouldn't go risk Tiger Woods $1,000 a hole in golf, would you? You want to go play a skins game with Tiger Woods, you're going to risk 1000 bucks a hole, and you've never played golf before. That's just dumb. Why do people do it in trading then? Foolish, okay? So remember, guys, I'm going to wrap this up now. Don't be a gambler, okay? You don't ever, ever want to look like this, okay? That's just, that's what stupidity looks like, okay? These are your choices for trading accounts with regard to if you don't have $25,000, you can take three trades a week. You can open up an offshore international brokerage account. You can join a prop firm. You can open up two or three smaller retail accounts. You can swing trade. And the other options, guys, are if you want, you could trade Forex. You could trade uh, E-minis or futures. I do not trade binary options or crypto. Do not do it. Don't ask me about it, okay? Um, don't ask me why I don't trade it, okay? Anyway. You could do Forex, but guys, Forex is a bunch of hackers too. I love Forex. There's some great Forex traders, but you know what I see most of the time? People with $250 accounts, $100 accounts, $300 accounts trying to get rich quick and just blowing them up left and right. This is a serious business. As you guys know, I've spent some time on Wall Street. I know the other side of it. Do you have any idea the preparation those folks take to beat you, to separate you from your money? You don't. Okay, you ever seen some of these MIT graduates with PhDs in their 20s and 30s sitting in a cubicle and all they're doing is coding to make money, to take you from your money? That's what you're up against. And you just want to go hack around it because you heard some Google advertisement. I could take $200 and do a million. Show me. It's crazy, guys. Come on, use some common sense. Even with my two grand into 50, I had eight years experience. 2,500 into 100 grand, I had eight years experience. Come on. So I'm not discouraging you from starting with two or 3,000. I'm not. I'm just letting you know the truth of the matter is it's an uphill climb with a smaller account. It's an uphill climb. But if you risk $10 per trade, you still have a good fighting chance at it, okay? Patterns don't change, guys, whether you have a large account, whether you have a small account. Let me explain that before I go. Let's use Apple as an example. A lot of traders, okay, and I'm gonna just spend a minute or two on this, so bear with me. A lot of traders, I get comments from folks saying, well, Jared, I can't trade Apple. I, why? It's a $200 stock. I said, so what? It's too expensive. I have to trade a penny stock. I love these people shilling penny stocks out there. Aren't they such frauds? Anyway, okay, it's not that penny stocks are terrible. You can trade them, but it's just, why would you exclusively trade penny stocks? Trade what moves, trade what gives you patterns, which is everything. So if you have a smaller account, say you have a $5,000 account and you only have four to one leverage. Well, on a $5,000 account, you can't risk more than $50. 1% is the maximum. Realistically, you should be risking like 10 bucks. But let's say you wanna risk 1% of your $5,000 account, 50 bucks. Well, in this scenario, Apple had a 60 cent stop loss. So if we take our trusty calculator out, okay, and we do $50 risk divided by 0 0.60, you need 83 shares of Apple times what is the price of Apple, 220, that's gonna cost you $18,000, okay? Well, if you have a standard retail account, your 5,000 is leveraged four to one. You have $20,000, so you could buy that trade on Apple, and that's 1%. You shouldn't be trading 1% with that small of an account because, well, you should be better than that and have a larger account. So if you're risking 10 or $20, Apple's gonna cost you eight to 10,000. Your account is leveraged. So if you had five grand, it would cost you what? Two or 3,000 of your five grand to get the 10,000 leverage, if that makes sense to you. I hope, I hope I didn't confuse you right there. The point I'm making is you wouldn't take 500 shares of Apple like I took or whatever I took of it. You would take 80 shares or 50 shares or 30 shares of Apple. Same with Amazon. You would just take lower shares. So don't give me this crap that I can't trade a certain stock because it's too expensive. If it's too spready or whippy, that's a different conversation. But don't give me that, oh, because it's too expensive crap. Okay, and remember, if you wanna be a swing trader, right? That's one of the choices in here. The patterns are the same. This is a daily three bar play. This is a daily breakout play. This is an intraday four bar play. This is an intraday buy setup. Patterns don't change. The only thing that changes is the time frame. Okay, the only thing that changes is the time frame. So I hope you guys enjoyed that lecture. I know it's a little less sexy some, from some of the other lectures I do. I'm gonna start doing slightly shorter lectures, guys, 15 to 30 minute lectures. All right, these hour long lectures are getting a little, 
little tiring for me, but 15 to 30 minute quick topic, quick lectures uh, going forward. So as always, guys, if you would like to get a 30 day $1 trial into the live traders chat room, 30 day $1 trial, email info, I-N-F-O at livetraders.com, info at livetraders.com. If you want to email me personally for a question, guys, I try to answer all my emails every day. I get hundreds, literally over 100 emails a day, and I answer every one of them. I sit at my computer for hours typing on emails, okay? Jared, J-A-R-E-D at livetraders.com if you have a question for me. Otherwise, $1, 30-day trial, info at livetraders.com, email them, all right? Jared Wesley, Live Traders, signing off. I hope you guys enjoyed that lecture. Take care, guys. To get more great educational content, subscribe to the Live Traders YouTube channel. This way you'll get email alerts every time I upload a new video.